Okay, so the today lecture topic is acceptance sampling. So acceptance sampling is a new chapter in the quality management, and uh, this is also the third branch of statistic and quality control charts. So I mean, acceptance sampling is not totally related to the quality, but it's showing you the quality level because we will randomly select a sample from a specific lot, and then we will decide on the base of that lot that we will accept or we will reject it. So initially we will not going to check that part, that product. We will not be going to check each and every part, but this is just a journal perception. This is just a journal interpretation of a specific sampling that we will accept or we will reject. It will be good or it will be defective. So in this chapter, we will cover uh, different things. For example, I will show you that how you will uh, construct a uh, operating uh, characteristic curve, what is producer risk, what is consumer risk, different uh, risk in the quality. So starting from the acceptance samplings, the definition of the accepted samplings. So as I already mentioned that this is the third branch of the statistical quality control charts, which refer to process of randomly inspecting a certain number of items from a lot or batch in order to decide whether to accept or reject the entire batch. So, just a simple example, for example, we have a specific lot, we have uh, a lot in that lot, the total number of product, let's suppose in that lot we have 5000 item, n is equal to 5000. So in order to inspect all those 5000 items, which one is effective and which one is defective will be very difficult. So in order to do acceptance sampling, so what we will do, we will let's suppose inspect 200 item, we will take 200 item randomly and then we will consider our acceptance criteria that we will buy this whole lot if there are probability of accept is less than or equal to, if it is less than or equal to 3 let's suppose. So if in this sample size which is 200, if the number of defective are 1, 2, or 3, then we will still buy this whole 5000 lot. But if the number of defective increase from 3, then we will not be able to buy this whole lot. So, for example, as you people know, probability of 0 plus probability of 1 plus probability of 2. So, we will calculate the cumulative probability for this. If this whole probability is less than or equal to 3, then we will consider this whole lot. Otherwise, we will reject if the number of defective increase more than 3. So, this sample uh, sampling is called accepting sampling technique and we will decide whether to accept a lot or reject a lot. So, different form of SPSC uh, statistical process controls because acceptance sampling is performed either before or after the process rather than during. So, I mean you can uh, do it before or after the process. You will not be able to do it in the middle. You, for example, in the lot example, you will do, it is a lot, there are 5000, let's suppose mobile phone, you want to buy it or you not want to buy it. So, I mean this is after or before when you are mean buying something. So, sampling before typically is done by supplier material. The, the material from which you want to produce something. So, for example, for making potato, potato chips, you need some potatoes from the agriculture land. So, you need to buy some specific amount of potatoes. Then how you will, there are different bulks of potatoes, let's suppose. So, mean you will not be able to check each and every potato, but randomly you will take 1 kg from one place, 1 kg from another, and then on the basis of that, you will decide to buy from that farmer or not to buy from that farmer. Sampling after involves sampling finished item before shipment or finished component prior to assembly. So, I mean you can do the acceptance samplings before or after. Or when you prepared it, you can check it that we have 5000 uh, product finished product. So, in order to check, in order to accept, in order to reject, we will do sampling. So, when they use acceptance samplings, basically they use where there is very expensive to inspect each and every product. 
So I mean, it will be very difficult. For example, in the potato example, to check each and every potato, it is very difficult because maybe you will using thousand uh, potatoes. So it will be very difficult, and plus it will be very costly, and it will take too much time. So it will reduce your optimality level. So accepting samplings, this is also a technique which uh, appeared after 1940, after the Second World War, and basically the U.S. military introduced this uh, in order to test the bullets because uh, they uh, at that time they produced uh, million of bullets. So I mean it will be very difficult to count each and every bullet, to check and inspect each and every bullet. It will be very time consuming. On other side, the the the, the military personnel need bullets on borders on the in order to protect the boundaries. So the concept and methodology were developed by Harold Dodge, a veteran of the Bell Laboratories Quality Assurance Department, who was acting as a consultant to the Secretary of War. So basically, they use this exception sampling technique in order to check the quality of the bullet, to accept the lot or to reject the lot. So this is the uh, evolution of the exception sampling. Now people at different level in the production area. In different businesses, they are using these techniques in order to accept or order to reject the lot. So, what is acceptance sampling? Lot acceptance sampling. So, a statistical quality control technique where a random sample is taken from a lot, and upon the result of appraising the sample, the lot will be either be rejected or accepted. So, as I already mentioned, you will. But uh, I will discuss something that lot should be homogeneous. Mean all the art uh, there will let's suppose in the lot there will only be mobile phone. It means there will be one product. If you producing some specific let's suppose uh, mobile phone or if you producing specific mobile chargers, so mean the main thing will be the chargers. There will not be different items. So the lot will be homogeneous. So a procedure for Sentencing incoming badges are lots of items without doing 100% inspection because 100% inspection, inspection will be very difficult. So you need to do accepting sampling. The most widely used sampling plans are given by military standard. So there are, there are different uh, standards for the sampling just like me in the ISO standard. So for sampling, this is the most widely used sampling plans which was given by military standard and this is the code of that. MILS standard 105E. So why we need samplings? Because we want to determine the quality level of an incoming shipment or at the end of production because it will be difficult to check each and everything. So randomly you select something and on the base of that you will decide. You, you want to judge whether quality level is within the level that has been predetermined. So just like in the statistical quality control charts, we construct different upper and lower limits. And then we need to check that where our product, where are our observation lines. So I mean this is also a form of that quality control charts. But acceptance samplings give you no idea about the process that are producing those items. So I mean this is just the selection process. This is just an exception or rejection. This is just mean okay or not okay. It will not tell you the quality of that product, that how is it working. If it is a food item, it will not tell you the test of that item. It will not tell you the ingredients of that. It will not tell you the recipe of that. But you will just accept or you will reject the lot. So types of sampling plans, sampling by attributes versus sampling by variables. Incoming versus outgoing inspection, rectifying versus not rectifying inspection, what is done with non-conforming item found during inspection, defective may be replaced by good item. So I mean, if there are some defective, for example, if some defective occurred in the product, so the producer can focus on their material, focus on their processes in order to improve the quality of their product. So in this way, they can rectify it, they can reproduce it, they can re-engineer it. Okay. So different types of sampling plan are exist now these days. Single sampling plan, double sampling plan, multiple sampling plans, and sequential sampling plans. How acceptance sampling works? Attributes go not to go inspection. Okay, should we need to go or should we not need to go? Should we need to uh, adopt it or should we not need to adopt it? So these are attributes. Defective pro product acceptability across range. So you need to check the defective products, defective number of defect per unit, how many defectives particle we produce daily, how 
many number of defective parts produced by a specific machine if there is some variation occur in the quality continuous measurement usually measured by mean and standard deviation because yesterday was your quality the variation was not too much but today uh, the, the, the quality is a little bit varied from the yesterday so i mean maybe there is some uh, variable occurrences due to that the variation occur so now except in sampling use is most likely to be used in one of five situation so when you need to use acceptance sampling when the test is destructive because destructive if you want to do a destructive you will destroy the whole part you will destroy the whole particle you will check you will inspect each and every particle so at this way all the particle will be destructive that will be a loss to the company so in order to avoid from this destructive test you need to do sampling sampling is necessary so at this way your cost will be reduced and your profit will be go up otherwise all of the unit will be destroyed by testing when the cost of 100% inspection is high because if you want to check each and everything just like in the bullet example if you producing million of bullets it will be very difficult to inspect each and everything so in this way you need to do acceptance sampling test in relation to the cost of passing an announcement non conforming unit when there are many similar unit to be inspected okay if you producing different similar units so it will be very difficult to check each and every similar units so with manual inspection fatigue and uh, boredom cause a higher percentage of non conforming material to be passed there then would occur on the average using a sampling plan when information concerning producer quality such as expar r p and c chart and cpk is not available so you can also use these parameters which we have already covered in the previous lectures x bar chart r bar chart p bar chart c chart so we can also check the conformance level that our observation our product are in the quality control or not they are outside from the quality limits so if the information of these are not available so you can also use acceptance sampling because acceptance sampling is not required too much data but these things require too much data when automated inspection is not available okay so in these scenarios you can use acceptance sampling why not 100% inspection because problem with 100% inspection very expensive yes it is very expensive you will hire more labor you will hire more people in order to count each and every in order to check each and every product if you producing 1000 million product it will be very difficult can't use that product must be destroyed to test so because in the destructive test you need to destroy the product you need to check each and every you will not be able to repair it because that unit will be go into the waste and when waste increase your cost also increase because the ingredient the material which you use in that product when it's going into the waste that will be totally a waste that will be totally a loss so handling by inspector can include defects inspection must be very tedious so defective item do not slip through inspection okay so that is why we will not be able to do 100% inspection a lot by lot sampling plan so mean this is lot let's suppose we are producing 10000 item so what we will do we will take a sample of size n we will count that sample of size and we will uh, accept or reject we will just uh, design our acceptance level that if in this count the uh, let's suppose we to 100 parts from this lot if in this lot five are if five are defective then okay we will consider it we will accept this whole lot but if the number of defective are more than five then in that case we will not be able to buy this we will not be able to specify this so specify the plan so this is sample size and this is the acceptance criteria range given n n is the sample size the, uh, the population size per lot size and determine the sample size and acceptance number reject lot if number of defect so if defect is greater than c for example if in a lot 100 are if in a lot n is the sample size 100 and c is 2 so i will accept if there are two defective but if it is more than 2 so defective now defective are 3 now defective are now 3 so 3 is greater than 2 d is greater than c so in this case we will reject otherwise if this if it is defective one so this is greater than one so we will accept the lot lot formation so mean 
how you will check how you will identify the lot how you will check the behavior of the lot so mean the most important thing you need to check lot should be homogeneous mean in the lot there should be same material same product okay unit in a lot should be pro pro produced by the same machines operators from common raw material approximately same time so the attributes of that product those product will be same the plots are not homogeneous except in samplings scheme may not function effectively and make it difficult to eliminate the source of defective products okay so it will create problem for you large lot prefer to smaller one more economically efficient okay so large lot will be good as compared to the smaller one in smaller one the probability of defective is high or maybe the probability of defective will be high but it's a little bit risk the risk is more in the smaller one Lot should be conformed to the material handling system in both the vendor and consumer facilities. Lot should be packaged to minimize shipping risk and make selection of sample units. So these are the attributes in the formation of the lot. You need to mention all these. Random sampling, units selected for inspection from lot must be chosen at random. So you not need to pick, to choose, to take the item from a specific location. For example, if there are different warehouses in a company, you need to select item from different warehouses, from different portion, from different location. Should be representative of all unit in a lot. Watch for salting. Vendor may put good units on top layer or lot. So sometimes even uh, if you want to check the quality of mango, so mean maybe you will also face the problem that mean the vendor what they do they put the good quality mangoes on the top and put the the defective one in the bottom so mean you also need to think so you also need to put some sample from the from the top and some from the middle and some from the uh, from the underneath so vendor may put good unit on top la uh, layer up lot knowing as inspector might only sample from the top layer so you also need to watch these sorting suggested technique uh, assign a number to each unit or use location of unit in a lot for example if you check one warehouse or one lot in uh, in a specific city, another from update company in another city. So you also need to write, you also need to identify, you also need to write the number of each location. Generate pick a random number from each unit location in lot. So you also need to note this short on the random number, reordering the lot location pair. So I mean these are some attributes while doing random sampling. So in order to do such like random sampling, your ex experiment will be a little bit uh, accurate. Select first or last 